Uh, good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, July 13th, 2011 meeting of the Urban Design Commission. May we have a roll call? Douglas Gasek? Here. James Doherty? Here. Jim Sawhill? Here. Andrew Garcia? Here. Jeff Dinwiddie? Thomas Tiber? Here. Stephen Pratt? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, the next item of business is minutes. We have minutes from February 10th, 2010, March 10th, 2010, and May 11th, 2011. Uh, may I have a positive motion? It's moved by Mr. Gasick, seconded by Mr. Garcia, just beat Mr. Doherty. Um, is there any uh, additions or corrections to the minutes? Is there any objection to the minutes? Yes. Um, I, I was only here on the May 11th, so I will only um, speak to that. How do you want to separate them? Or how oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was only here for the May 11th meeting, so I don't know if you want to separate those into separate discussions or what, but I don't have any problem with May 11th meetings. The other ones I can't not uh, comment on one way or the other, so. I'll make a note in the minutes for you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, Mr. Pratt. Any other discussion on the minutes? Again, objection to the minutes. Seeing none, that's approved. Um, special order of business is next. Do we have any disclosures tonight? Evidently not, so that will bring us to the consent agenda. Um, are there any items that would uh, like to be pulled from the consent agenda? Yes, I have an item. Um, I'd like to pull case 2010-063, the park master plan for Far North Bicentennial Park trail improvements. Okay. The, cool. the resolution. 2010-63. Are there any other items on the consent agenda that anyone would like to pull? Seeing none, I would ask for a motion for approval for the remainder of the consent agenda. It's moved by Mr. Doherty, second by Mr. Tiber. Um, is there any other discussion on the remaining item of the consent agenda? Any other corrections, additions? I guess there isn't unless we pull them. Um, so is there objection to the consent agenda? Question, question Mr. Garcia. Um, I thought we were going to get a finalized landscaping plan for that South High School project prior to. Is there a final approval then? This isn't the final approval? I think. My recollection is there was a condition of approval for us to see the final landscaping plan on the consent agenda at, the at a future date. Um, I think we eliminated that because we didn't know what we would do if we didn't like it. It was just a courtesy that we'd get. That's my recollection. Um, Ms. Ferguson? Yes, I saw the uh, minutes that um, Jill had prepared, and I, the way it stands is that they were supposed to hear it on the non-public hearing, they were supposed to look at it, but I think Mr. Doherty may have it right that it was a courtesy, but Jill, can you go back and double check that um, just on the minutes? Just a clarification, were you talking about the, the landscaping plan, not the agreement with the homeowners association? It's the landscaping yeah, plan. Yeah, the landscaping plan for um, resolution 2011-006. I think you may have to check Granis, Granicus. I think your minutes say it's to come back as a non-public hearing, the landscape plan. The minute, it would have been in the, um, after the motions and during the discussion, so it should probably show up in the minutes. Um, if you want to um, take a, a break for a minute, I can take a look or we can. Come I know that's what the minutes say. <clears throat> I just read them a few days ago. Um, just a point of clarification. If the landscaping plan was going to, so you want me to verify that the landscaping plan is or isn't supposed to come back. Right. And that would have had to have been a, an amendment of some sort or in the main motion. Right. Here, um, I, I, um, can I speak? Yeah, Mr. Pratt. 
Um, yes, I, I reviewed that also, and my recollection was as the minutes stated, and it's on the, um, I guess, the second to last page, page seven of the minutes, item number nine, um, where it says that they'll submit the landscape plan prior or plan to the UDC for non-public hearing site plan review. Prior to any use of the improvements, the buffer landscaping zone has to be completed and accepted. Um, so, so my recollection was that the resolution would not be held up until we saw that, but once that was finalized, that it would be provided as a, as a courtesy, as I believe was stated earlier. But. He's on uh, page on, seven on of the minutes. Page, yeah, it, it's it's page seven, number nine. It's about it's the it's the second to last paragraph on the page, and it's the second to last sentence in that second to last paragraph, I believe. Hey. But that, but that yeah, well yeah that was a concern but. Well, at this point, we've pulled case 2010-063. Is that correct, Mr. Ordi? That's the one you pulled. Um, do we want to go ahead and then and then pull 2011-036 uh, and then postpone that to our next meeting so we can get that clarified, whether that's a condition of approval or not uh, by staff? Uh, would that seem appropriate at this point? Can I get a motion to uh, to pull that case, please? Mr. Chairman, just as a point of clarification, so we're going to ask the staff to go back and review their notes to make sure that the minutes comply with their notes? That the resolution complies with the minutes and, and the conditions oh, are okay. correct. Okay. Um, that's moved by Mr. Garcia. Need a second. Mr. Gasick, thank you. Um, so we have a motion to pull 2011-036. So that leaves us with one resolution of approval and the consent agenda. Is there any issues with that, with that item? Is there objection to that item? Seeing none, that is approved. Um, that brings us back to the first item that was pulled, 2010-036, um, uh, public si uh, facility site plan review for a park master plan for far north Bicentennial Park Trail Improvement Plans. Mr. Doherty? 2010-063. Yeah, I think, you know, my concern is maybe administrative um, that uh, my memory is failing a little bit, but in the discussion on that case, which apparently was only before us once, um, I remember, I think I remember providing conditions since there was testimony that no that no parking analysis was part of that plan I believe I made a condition that the plan should include some mention of a parking analysis or that parking should be addressed as part of the trail improvements and the um, the resolution didn't have any language like that I, I approached Sharon about it she thinks that um, she might have done it on memory and needs to go back through the the uh, the actual transcriptions. And she, if what I'd like to do is just sort of defer this and give staff a chance to make sure that it it complies with the actual um, minutes of the meeting or the, the actions at the meeting. Because as it is right now, the resolution doesn't say anything. It doesn't address parking at all in any of the conditions. Okay. Yeah, I guess, well, my understanding is that this is just documenting what happened. It's not like an action. And that there's some concern that it isn't fully documented. So by having extra time, like postponement, it would give them time to make sure that the language is correct. And what actions are appropriate on this to postpone? with the 
and verify that it matches the units with regard to the position of the And it's not at the time. It's like we'd want to see it. Yeah, it's my preference to postpone with direction on what, what to get clarified. I'm confused on what the motion is at this time. We haven't made, we haven't made one yet, so. Um, and we have a, a, a motion to postpone by Mr. Doherty. Can I get a second, please? Or Mr. Gasick, would you speak to your motion and, and provide guidance to staff on what you would like to accomplish with the postponement, please? I, I think that staff just needs a little bit of time to verify that the that the language in the resolution does in fact match what was resolved at the meeting. And uh, it was uncertain in my informal discussions. It was uncertain, and by having a month, um, that would be adequate time to to verify that that's correct. Yes, thank you. Um, is there any further discussion on the postponement? Is there objection? Seeing none, that is approved. That brings us back to South Anchorage High, Resolution 2011-006 for an amendment to a public facility site plan review of the South Anchorage High School. Um, Mr. Gasick, you requested the pulling of that? Well, I think it was me, Mr. Garsha, who did. Garsha, okay. We're both G's. <laughs> Just trying to remember. My memory's tough these days. Um, would you like to speak to that, please? Yeah, I'd like to postpone the approval of this until um, the board is provided with item number nine from the um, page seven, the in reference to the landscape plan um, for UDC for non-public hearing site plan review prior to the use of the improvements. Buffer landscaping zone has to be completely accepted. Okay, so we have a motion for postponement. Once you push your button to move so, you will. And we need a second, please. All right, Mr. Gasick, thank you. Is there any further discussion on the postponement? Uh, Mr. Tybor. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just uh, was t taking a look at the uh, minutes, and it does look like that was uh, offered up as a... Uh, uh, motion um, that was then uh, as an amendment that was then uh, uh, not approved. If you look at page seven, it was uh, Commissioner Doherty uh, uh, moved to approve the case uh, with those conditions, and there was uh, multiple comments, uh, several pages of comments. And then the amendment to condition seven, uh, which is on page 12, uh, the vote uh, was uh, uh, failed. Okay. But, well, I think, I think the postponement will give staff a, a, yeah, and then we had the amendment to nine, which passed. But this will give staff time to go through and clarify and make sure we have this correct. Sure. So, uh, Mr. Pratt, you asked to um, yeah, comment? So, so, so is the motion then to to have staff ensure that the, that the minutes are correct, or is it to actually have the, the submission prior to this resolution being passed? Um, the, the motion is to postpone the resolution of approval with direction to staff to uh, you know, double check the minutes and ensure that the resolution re accurately reflects the okay. conditions of approval. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Doherty. Uh, just curiosity, um, and I probably should have asked it for the last uh, motion for postponement, but does anybody know whether or not this adversely impacts the, the, the petitioner's schedule by postponing the resolution? Um, no. Football is uh, way off in the future at some point. Um, baseball, we've already issued a couple of permits, so uh, there shouldn't be any delay. Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion? Is there objection to the most motion to postpone? Seeing none, that is approved. That brings us uh, down to our next item of business, uh, site landscape approval item two. We have no items. Um, down to our reg regular agenda, um, we have uh, Case 
2011-075. The petitioner is Alaska Housing Finance Corp. It's a site plan and landscape plan review for public facilities. The site and landscape plan review for public facilities, Nunica Valley, um, Tract 1. Um, staff, may we have a presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chair. AHFC is requesting public facility concept site plan review and concept landscape plan review. The site is zone PLI. The purpose of the project is to relocate an existing building onto property owned by AHFC for use as an office for maintenance administration. The building will be set onto a new basement foundation. The petitioner is considering developing a maintenance vehicle storage yard and shop building in the future. This use will require a conditional use review by the Planning and Zoning Commission. This area is shown on the site plan. <clears throat> The nearest sewer line and water line connections to the subject property are not available from an adjacent parcel. The hookup to sewer or water would entail crossing the adjacent property, which is zone PLIP. The petitioner will need to obtain an easement across the adjoining municipal park property. At the time of this writing, this easement has not been obtained. Alternatively, AHFC is considering the installation of a septic system. At the time of this writing, an application for a septic system has not been, <clears throat> excuse me, has not been submitted to the Department of Environmental Conservation. The petitioner anticipates having a water line to service their facility enter the property at the southeast corner. However, this will necessitate, as with the sewer line, the need to cross an adjoining parcel. The location of the dumpsters does not appear to allow trucks to approach the dumpsters head on. The turning radius is too tight to, per to permit this movement. The dumpsters should be relocated to a more viable location. The, uh, excuse me, the petitioner plans to preserve the native vegetation along the perimeters of the site. 30 feet will be preserved along the east property line and 25 feet along the east and south property lines. Most of the native vegetation along the north property line has been or will be removed. Construction fencing will be placed along the required setbacks. The fencing type should be temporary chain link to provide a stout barrier to prevent heavy equipment encroachment into the setback areas. The sidewalk around the building appears to be four and five feet wide. Municipal code requires a clear four foot walkway. Either the sidewalks will need to be wider, six feet or greater, or wheel stops will need to be shown for each parking space around the building to prevent car bumper overhang onto the sidewalk. The locations shown for snow storage are inadequate and incorrectly located. The area shown on sheet LS20 shows snow storage to the west of the parking lot. This area is also occupied by the 25-foot native vegetation setback. Thus, the snow storage will have to be relocated to a more viable area, and it should be capable of adequate, adequately storing the snow that will accumulate on the parking lot and sidewalks. Alternatively, snow can be hauled to a snow disposal site. The department recommends the following recommend, recommendations. Uh, there are 20 of them. Staff can answer any question the commissioners may have. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Mr. Pratt. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, I looked at this and I'm kind of new to this commission. I don't understand all the, the, the ins and outs, but the, and some of the recommendations, for example, um, the requirement that all of the plants be, um, be nursery grown and conform to conform to the standards for nursery stock. Is that, is that some kind of a municipal code? Yeah, it's a practice we've been using for a decade. Okay. Yeah. And my, my second question is um, the the potential installation of septic tanks in a in an area like this that's very um, you know I guess it's not downtown. But this is this is at Debar and Boniface, is that right? Yes. Or in that area? In that area. And do we anticipate significant development in that area over the next, say, ten years? Well, what it's bounded think? by park on one side and PLI land on another side, and then of course the Safeway 
strip mall to the north, um, the PLI land, not certain what could happen with that. That that could develop. I don't know it, how dense it would be. It's it's not, you know, it's not a zone for residential anywhere near it. Um, so I'm not anticipating to see a, a lot of density in that immediate area surrounding the site. So a septic tank might be the, the most economical way to go. It may be. Hmm. Yeah, that, that kind of surprised me. Um, okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Apparently not. Will the applicant please come forward? Hi, my name is Alan Rohde, and I'm with Rohde Associates Architects, and uh, we're commissioned by Alaska Housing Finance Corporation to handle this project. So I can answer any questions that you might have uh, about any of the comments or... Do you have or, any additional information you would like to provide us? Well, I can, you know, going back to, you know, discuss the, the septic issue that was, in fact, brought up, um, it is a more you know, financially viable option given the long distance that we've got to to travel. There's very low occupant load for the building. This is a uh, an office building that handles appointments by potential uh, housing candidates for AHFC. So there are, I don't think there's more than a half a dozen offices within this building. So we've got an occupant load of maintenance guys that come in there in the morning, they get their orders to go out and fix items on residential properties that the AHFC maintains throughout the city, and then they leave for the day and come back and log their returns in and such. So there's not a lot of uh, occupant load for for this building, so there's not a lot of septic load, you know, in terms of that. There's no uh, overnight lodging or showering or anything like that that happens within this facility, and none is anticipated. So, so I don't see the septic. Uh, being a large uh, amount of effluent regardless. So I, I don't think that's any kind of an issue there. Um, there was a, a comment about relocating the, uh, the dumpsters, which we can certainly look at that. Um, no matter how, if you look at the site plan, no matter how or where we put it, a truck coming in uh, has, to, has to turn to leave the site. So there will be multiple opportunities in different locations on the site for a truck that has to come in and turn with a T-type turn to go out. And the turn radius was designed for the fire trucks within the municipality, so it can certainly handle the, the uh, dumpster trucks as well. Thank you. Um, do you have any objection to the 20... Uh, conditions of approval are are all those fine with you? I, I may need some clarification on on a couple of them. Uh, no problem with the, the trees being nursery grown. Anything that we bring onto the site will, of course, be nursery grown and, and purchased and installed by you know landscapers and such. So nothing with the first two. Um, and, and the dotted pattern, we can certainly satisfy whatever is needed. Uh, or required in terms of plant requirements within that area. Uh, it can be anything from grass to shrubs or, you know, trees, which are, we're not particular about it. For us, the, the concern is more to get this project moving and still make the summer's timeline. So, so the trees and shrubs aren't, are a particular concern, whatever satisfies. Um, on number five, it says provide visual enhancement landscaping in lieu of arterial landscaping. And my understanding would be that there's a small area, short area of arterial landscaping along the uh, northwest corner of that uh, property that, as you go further south, goes into buffer landscaping. So my understanding is that we're only referring to that northern portion. Is that correct? Yes, um, through the chair, Mr. Rohde, um, yes, where you show the clouded area where the um, natural vegetation is to be remained, just north of that, between that area and the entry drive, there's a, some arterial landscaping shown. Right. 
but it, it's really supposed to meet the visual enhancement landscaping standard. Okay, so that's an easy modification. Yeah. When, when I look at the, the dumpsters that are shown on the site plan, there are currently two shown, and those were shown with the anticipation of that future shop building uh, requiring the second one. So for this development, we're going to reduce to one dumpster, and it would be our preference to leave the southerly of the two dumpsters where it is, and that allows us to push snow in front of it as well. If we put it at the end of the drive, say around the corner to the right, as you drive in, then it's at a dead end and we can't clear snow from in front of it very well. So it kind of helps us to be able to push snow uh, left to, or from left to right of the dumpster and push it into a snow storage area. Uh, at the end of an aisle, it's a little bit more difficult to get it clear right in front of the dumpster. Um, the only other adjustment that we uh, are going to make is the handicap parking aisle will be adjusted uh, up one parking space to permit the aisle to align with the front of the building. You'll see on the site plan there where the sidewalk for the center of the building, that should line up with the handicap aisle. So it's a minor adjustment that doesn't affect anything else. And the, the, the snow storage that's shown along the western boundary of the site inadvertently, you know, extends into the um, buffer landscaping and will relocate that snow storage area. Um, let's see, two and three shrubs in the area north of the building, no problem there. The moose protection fencing, that's in our best interest as well as yours, so we'll certainly do that. The chain link fence, no problem. Um, clearing limits, no problem. Replacement vegetation for the water line alignment through existing vegetation. So uh, you would just like that planted more densely than uh, what's shown there. Now, um, the only thing we're going to have with that is we're going to have to limit what we can put over top of that utility according to that utility's um, requirements. They won't let us plant large trees over top of that utility, so we'll have to adjust accordingly. Uh, now, number 13, obtain a shared access agreement and record the easement with the state recorder's office. And it kind of also goes hand-in-hand in hand with number 14, obtain the driveway permit from uh, Alaska Department of Transportation. In our uh, discussions with them, it, it was posed to us that we needed to apply for the application for driveway permit, which we've done, and that this, we weren't going to be granted another location for a driveway uh, upon the state's consideration of the site. This was where the driveway was going to be, and it is going to be shared with the car's property to the north. And all that we were required to do was make application for this driveway permit, and then a joint permit was going to be issued to both property owners. Um, we specifically asked uh, Tucker Hearn at the Department of Transportation if uh, there was a shared use agreement required or anything of this nature that had to be recorded, and he said solely the driveway permit, as far as the state was concerned. Didn't know about other entities that might require something like that, but as far as the state was concerned, he felt that no other uh, shared use agreement need to be recorded. So there's a clarification that I need to get with the state and, and just figure out the extent of paperwork that's required to do that driveway permit. Well, I, I think the condition as it states says you've got to get a driveway permit. That's one issue. And the completely right. separate issue is the, and, uh, the shared access agreement because you will be crossing the Safeway parcel to get to your parcel. I understand so that. The question is, does the state require, or require this shared use agreement or does the municipality require this? The municipality requires it. Okay. So it's a separate requirement, not required by the state. Exactly. Tucker was correct in what he said, but the requirement's coming from the municipality. Yes. And we'll take care of that. Okay. And no problem with number 15. That's just going to fall into place depending on how. We've applied for the easement over the, the property for the water line is a, a parks and rec property. It's a PLI parks and rec property. So they uh, apparently had a meeting last night uh, regarding that, and it got pushed off the agenda to the next meeting. So 
So we're still standing by to trying to determine whether we're going to bring our water over the hill or drill a well. Uh, same way, uh, number 16 is the same issue. Uh, we've uh, 17 will comply with the sidewalk width or put the, the parking wheel stops in. Um, no problem with either of those options. Um, I already discussed moving the one snow storage area. If there's a, another storage area that's in of any concern, let me know what that is and we'll adjust it. Uh, the dumpster relocation. Uh, again, I'd prefer to leave the one dumpster where it is, remove the other one. And I believe every, all of the uh, vegetation that needs to be removed from the southern portion of the site has been removed with the exception of any possible area that might be required for relocating the snow uh, storage site. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Doherty, you have questions of the petitioner? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if this is uh, specific to the uh, petitioner or uh, whether this is for staff, but it, um, it seems like we, for final approval, I'm, the, the landscaping um, design work appears on the architectural sheets and I think there's a requirement for a professional landscape architect stamp for approval? Yes, uh, we did have some discussion about that at the pre-application meeting. Um, yeah, it was noted by several people that um, the landscape plan was lacking. Um, but it is a state requirement to have, um, you know, um, but I think um, you d it isn't solely a landscape architect that can prepare and stamp landscape plans, but typically the UDC and Planning and Zoning Commission, when they view a landscape plan, it is pre prepared by a registered landscape architect. In this case, this was not, this did not happen. I, I, so that's the clarification. Is, does state law require a landscape architect stamp on a landscape plan? No, not it, it. The state requires. Uh, there are several p professions that can prepare a landscape plan, but typically, when landscape plans come to the UDC or, as I said, PNZ, they have a professional landscape architect prepare the landscape plan. But in this case, it wasn't done. Okay, I'm just remembering a policy that we put in place maybe three years ago where we were insisting on a landscape architect stamp. And I wasn't sure if that was municipal policy or whether that was state policy or whether we were just... That's what you wanted to see, I think. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, we discussed that with Mr. Rohde at the pre-application meeting. And did staff agree to allow it to go with an architect's only stamp for the landscaping plan? Well, he was unwilling to uh, hire a landscape architect to do it, so this is what we ended up with. Okay, thanks. Uh, as far as I know, there's no state requirement for it to be a landscape architect. I'm an architect and I've been doing this for 20 years, and if there's a problem with the landscape plan, I'm certainly happy to accommodate and accept recommendations for it. If I were, I've previously done things such as working on the master plan for East High School. And at that point in time, we did a landscape plan in uh, combination with Land Design North. This is um, a maintenance property. I'm not designing a park. I'm not designing something that's so publicly oriented that it's going to have people come and, you know, require that degree of landscape um, design and, and frankly there's not the budget in this project for it. There's not the, uh, if I had the budget to hire one I'd do it. It wasn't up to me, it was up to AHFC. We did the best that we could with the resources available for a maintenance building. Well this isn't, this isn't an issue that the, the Urban Design Commission has authority over. Um, it's, it's governed by state law in terms of what the licensing requirements are. Um, so I, I would defer to state law and, and let that govern. Um, it's my understanding this is a fairly recent requirement for registered landscape architects, and that's why you may not have encountered this in the past. But 
um, I, I would be reluctant to to put an additional requirement over what already stands on the books, um, but would encourage staff to do the necessary research to make sure that what we're doing meets state licensing law. Uh, we, were, we asked Angela Chambers specifically this question, and this has come up in topic before, uh, on this specific project, and the response was there, there is no state requirement or municipal requirement for it to be that way. So as such, we felt within the bounds of our abilities and um, within the law to do the landscape plan for the project. Mr. Garshin. Um, the question I had was you'd mentioned earlier um, the possibility of a well for water instead of connecting to the main water line to the southeast of the property. Is that correct? It's a, it's a fallback position that is available to us if we need to pursue that. So if it, from a maintenance perspective and reliability perspective, water quality perspective, all of those different things we would much prefer to connect to public utility, and that's why we've applied for the easement across the park property. We're just waiting for a determination on that. If, you know, it's not a feasible option, then, uh, then we're frankly out of options and we're left with the potential to have to do the well. Okay, and the only question I had with the well, and that just based off my not having knowledge on it is because uh, you're showing a, a fire hydrant on the south east west of the building. Can you have fire hydrants supplied by well water? We can. We'd have to put a storage tank in okay. in order to accommodate that. So, if, if you did put that storage tank in, where would that be located at? It would probably be in the basement of the building. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Apparently not. Thank you. Thank you. With that, the matter rests with the board. Can I have a positive motion, please? This is when everybody looks at their toes. Uh, Mr. Garcia, thank you. Mr. Gay, six seconds. Can you uh, go ahead and formulate your motion, please? I motion to approve case number 2011-075, um, concept site plan and concept landscape plan for Alaska Housing Finance Corporation East Asset Maintenance Project um, based on the project's compliance being consistent with the goals and policies of the Anchorage 2020 Comprehensive Plan, specifically policy number 44, design and build public improvements for long-term use, and number 50. Excuse me, before you uh, get to, the, to your findings, um, are, there, are there conditions of approval for your motion? I'm sorry, you're right. I'm out of sequence here. No, you're, you're good. Um, based on the conditions, my motion is based on the re department recommendations, items number one through 20. Great. And could you uh, speak to the motion, please? Can I pick up where I left off? You can. <laughs> <laughs> and based on policy number 50, the healthy mature trees and forested areas shall be retained as much as possible. Okay. Is there any further discussion or findings for the record? I have not at this time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Gasek. Yeah, I'll kind of reiterate Commissioner Garsha's findings a bit here, too, because the plan is really consistent with those policies that he mentioned, 44 and 50, with the retention of this nice vegetative barret buffer in the area, and then also planning for future expansion on the site with the proposed future building, so taking that into account really right away helps us meet the policies of Anchorage 2020. Thank you. Mr. Doherty? I, I was just wondering if the, uh, if you would accept uh, some friendly amendments to your motion. Um, I, I didn't see that we had basis for requiring the dumpster to have a straight-on approach, and the petitioner mentioned several different design alternatives. Given that this is a preliminary submittal and that there's quite a number of design 
things that need to be worked out before final that are in these 20 conditions. I would recommend dropping condition number 19. Um, just realizing from the discussion that there's snow removal issues with the straight on and that they're planning on providing a single dumpster instead of two. And there's a lot of things that uh, I think the petitioner needs flexibility to have a design solution and not have it locked into one as has been suggested with this condition. Would you be amenable to dropping number 19? I'm amenable to dropping number 19. As he mentioned, if a fire truck can make that turn, I'm sure a dump truck can as well. Ms. Ferguson? Through the chair, Mr. Doherty, all it says is re relocate the dumpsters to a practicable location to allow the trucks to approach the dumpsters head on. It doesn't say where it has to happen. It just says relocate it so that it's viable. It, it could be viable in the location that's shown. It could be. Oh, you're, oh I, yeah, so it's still a relocate. Okay. So you're saying in the same place? Well, I'm just saying that we don't need to dictate this for the designer. Um, he's going to have to come up with a reasonable solution for his final plan if it's going to get final approval. Maybe we'll just say instead of relocate, locate. Is it, is it imaginable that they would not have the dumpsters located where the trucks would be able to access them? They just showed it on their site plan. Yes. Well, if the, if the truck made a maneuvering, a T maneuver, they would be able to service those dumpsters. Not head on. They could back up to it. We have a, a suggestion to, under a friendly amendment, which I typically do not like, um, to drop uh, condition number 19. Is that, is that friendly amendment uh, uh, amenable to the, to the maker of the motion? Do we want to make that a formal amendment to amend? Formal motion to amend? Uh, I, I don't have a preference. If we need to vote on the amendment, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Mr. Garcia, do you have objection to the amendment? Uh, I'm sort of confused right now on which way if, is it being stated. Of, what, how is it being stated? My amendment was just to drop 19. I am fine with dropping number 19. They will have to have the dumpster in a location where it can be serviced. Or there's, there's no objection from the maker of the motion of the second. Is there objection? Yeah, Sorry. Uh, yeah, I object to it. I think staff's recommendation to use locate is a good reminder for us when it comes forward in the next review to make sure that it was considered and a proper location was designated rather than dropping the recommendation entirely. Okay. Since there is objection to the friendly amendment. Yeah, if you would like to uh, pursue this, Mr. Doherty, we need a, a motion to amend. I, I make a motion to amend um, the motion to remove condition number 19 as in the staff recommendations. We have a, a second from Mr. Pratt. Um, do you believe any additional discussion is warranted? Mr. Pratt, do you have anything to add? No, it just it just seems to me that um, you know, I can't imagine that any building would, would operate if they were to locate dumpsters or anything on the property that needs to be serviced on a regular basis. That doesn't meet um, the standard business criteria, so um, that's why I, I second it. I, it seems to me a, a reasonable, uh, reasonable amendment. Thank you. Any further discussion? Since there is objection, please vote. Use our machines. Clerk, voting to remove, correct? Yes, we'll remove the uh, condition and no, we'll keep it. Yep. That motion passes, so that condition is removed. Are there any other uh, amendments you would like to make, Mr. Doherty? Uh, yeah, I'd like to recommend, uh, I guess it would be condition number 20, now that 19 has been removed, to assure that the landscape design conforms to state law governing requirements for professional seals on final design documents. Okay, we have a motion to amend to add an additional condition by Mr. Doherty. Mr. 
waiting for our machine to catch up. Is there a second? Mr. Gasek, thank you. Could you please restate your, your condition? Yeah, the, like condition the condition would read, uh, assure that the landscape design conforms to state law governing requirements for professional seals on final design documents. Uh, I, I, I'm not an expert. I don't know what's required and what's not, but this serves as a reminder to make sure that, that whatever we get for the final is in conformance. And just speaking to that motion, I just want to uniformly apply, um, you know, what, what we do here to all applicants. Um, and we have made this request in the past, and I think it should be applied to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Mr. Gasek. It was stated well back, Mr. Doherty. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there objection to the amendment? Seeing none, that is approved. Mr. Doherty, do you have anything further? No. Thank you. Is there uh, any other board members have any additional amendments or findings they would like to make for the record? No? Is there objection to the motion? Seeing none, that is approved. Thank you. That brings us to not much left. Um, we don't have any public hearings tonight or appearance requests, reports. Um, the chair doesn't have any reports. I did talk to, I can never remember the person's name that takes care of uh, board appointments in the mayor's office, Jay Jackson. And uh, the word I got is they're working on it. And Yeah, that was part of my update. Um, Lori Abel has been um, chosen as a, for the vacancy that we have on the commission. And she is a, um, yeah, it was good. She's a horticulturalist. So, um, yeah, she, it's very welcome to have her uh, join the commission. So, I thought we had two vacancies. We should just have the one now. With Mr. Pratt, I think he was number eight and Lori is number nine. So I think we're, we're full now. The, the sheet I got in our packet shows two vacancies with Mr. Pratt on the board. So... Oh, well, we may be still short one. Yeah. Well, we're getting closer. That's, that's positive. And someone qualified. And oh, you're right. Yeah, we are still short one. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's good news. Um, Mr. Doherty, do you have something to add? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's somewhat related to, to vacancies. My, my term is up in October. Um, and I also serve on a, a public art committee representing the Urban Design Commission. And an issue that came up, and I can't remember if we discussed it in this commission or not, but there's a there's a bit of motion or an act in the assembly to abolish all commissions, um, including the Urban Design Commission, and language has been changed regarding the makeup of the public art uh, committee um, because to allow for the contingency that the Urban Design Commission is abolished. Um, but um, I just want to mention one, just to make sure everybody's aware that we're on the chopping block, <laughs> and two, that um, if uh, they should be seeking another person to fill my slot because I won't be here past October, and we'll need to, assuming that that the commission still survives, um, we'll need to also um, be thinking about who to fill that public art. Commission spot as a representative from UDC. Yeah, that is a follow up, follows up on what I, a couple of things I wanted to say. One is, yeah, as um, James has just said, his term is up in October, and also Doug's seat is up in October. And I know James had said that he didn't want to continue anymore. James has been on the commission for 10 years. <laughs> I, I just wanted to be on long enough to see the new Title 21 enacted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could take another 10, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, we could have a lot of rejoiners to that, but I'll refrain. Uh, 
And then, Doug, I was going to ask you, are you intending to uh, be, do you want to be reappointed? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Then you'll need to get your letter in. It doesn't need to be, you know, tomorrow since it's not up until October, but around in August, if you could get your letter of intent into the mayor's office, yep. that'd be good. Okay. Great. Okay, can I ask what? Mr. Pratt. What, what's, what's the process? Um, it's 2013, I think, that the UDC will go away if something doesn't happen. And is that the assembly has to affirmatively say, yeah, we want this to continue? Is that the? Yes. I, I'm not sure what the process will be. Um, I know Previously, the that's been the process. Yeah. But what it will be now, we I, don't I know, know. With, with past boards that I'm aware of that sunset, the administration would put an ordinance forward to continue the board, um, and then the assembly would have to prove it. I'm not sure if the administration will put an ordinance forward on some of these boards to continue them. I'm not sure what that procedure will be. Well, I think I, I talked to Larry Baker. My understanding is that the boards that they – there were some boards that they did away with immediately. Somehow they are able to do that, and other boards like the UDC. Um, or they – the administration will not be supporting them. And that includes the UDC. That's my understanding. Okay. So if there isn't another advocate, then I think that the process is then it will just terminate if, if it doesn't happen through the assembly. It, so. I think that raises an interesting point because Title 21, at least the chapters that we reviewed, give us some very specific authorities that, and duties. that are written into the title. Um, well... That's a dilemma for someone else to worry about. <laughs> they would have to amend the code to reassign those duties to P and Z, I would assume. Um, yeah. But I think part of the, the intent of Title 21 was to spread some of the workload and off of P and Z. And, and add that was part of it, and to give um, site plan review those aspects that this board is ideally suited for, given the makeup. You know, they have the expertise to do it that the Planning and Zoning Commission lacks. And the other option, of course, if, if uh, we as board members feel that this board should be extended, um, we could get an assembly person to write and introduce an ordinance and then advocate on its behalf uh, in front of the assembly and, and get it approved. On one level, I'm not really uh, against board sunsetting periodically. I, I think it's, it's refreshing to review the purpose of a board and to see if it's necessary and and, you know, as a community decide you want to go forward. Um, I would hope UDC would. Um, you know, some of the boards that they have eliminated immediately, that, that kind of made some sense. Um, but we'll, we'll just see how it plays out. 2013, huh? We'll see. That's right when my term ends, so. <laughs> so. Um, any other board comments? Anything else for us, Sharon? I just had one other thing. Um, dumpsters. Um, you'd be surprised at the number of plans that we look at that don't even show the dumpster. The dumpster is an um, afterthought. The, um, the owner moves into the building and they call up Solid Waste or Alaska Waste and say, hey, we need dumpster service. And they come out and they place a dumpster. There's absolutely no place to put it that it, the truck can get to. Um, about it's probably been five or six years now. Solid Waste and Alaska Waste, I think, is the other one. They called a meeting for the planning department, and they were begging us to have us review dumpster locations because they said they get out to sites and want to place a dumpster, and there's no place to do it. And they actually had two of us. It was myself and another planner go out with them, with them, and we rode around for an entire day on their route to see what they were up against. And they were impossible locations, and they were right. And they, they came in first and did a whole slideshow presentation of these various sites around town and showed you know, there was no viable place to put a dumpster. And how it slowed down their process, driving up rates for everybody, because, you know, they have to park the truck, get out, and, you know, it's a huge maneuver trying to do this. And so for that reason, since then, we've been trying to look very carefully at dumpster locations, even to the point that we want them to show, you know, like the turning radius, you know, the pattern that you'll see in, in um, 
the highway design book where they show various big sizes of cars and trucks and they show what the tr turning radius would be to re actually prove to us that the truck can make that turn and, and get to the dumpster. Um, and so that's why we kind of take extra special care to try and make sure that we review that. Okay. You know, it, so it sounds like solid waste services and Alaska waste need to look at their rate structure too. <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. Yeah. Because if, they, if they've got a, you know somebody that takes four times as much time as others, then they should just charge more for it. So that, should, that would solve the problem probably right away. The problem is it's just after, it's an afterthought. Especially with multifamily, residential, there's no thought given to it. Yeah. Any other board comments? Can I get a motion to adjourn, please? We're adjourned, but I was just curious, these, these things that we've deferred for delays, do we need to keep any of that paperwork or will new? Uh, we'll, we'll reprint those resolutions. Okay. I still don't have a second. We're going to be here all night. <laughs> Mr. Tyler, thank you. <laughs> they like it here. <laughs> Unanimous.